Now, if the screen keeps in time with me, <laughs> I am to present an award to a woman named Di. Di who, you ask? This is a great honour, Di, my old friend, to be asked to present the Lloyd O'Neill to you. We no longer live next door, so it's going to take a while for me to get to your place to see it on your shelf. Uh, but I have always admired the energy with which you've remade, you have always remade yourself in the face of great shifts in your life, including, uh, and this is another novel uh, Di has yet to write, The Georgetown Massacre. In that spirit, you've made yourself one of the major figures in Australian publishing. In nigh on 30 years, you've published 24 novels and a number of children's books. Your first novel, Heart of the Dreaming, appeared in 1989, and the latest, A Distant Journey, in 2016. Your subjects are place, including the holy places of the Songmaster, your 1997 bestseller, and politics, history, the environment, and what we all write about, love and death. Uh, and um, um, your um, 2012 book on Myanmar, The Golden Land, led to a typical Di Morrissey resolve to build a school outside Mandalay, which you've now done, as well as a very demanding writing and school building schedule. You somehow have time to edit a glossy local newspaper named the Manning Community News, which is the most literate <laughs> local newspaper in Australia. Not a hard contest, you would say. <laughs> but Di wins it by furlongs. And... Uh, your success has made it possible for your publishers to undertake more Australian titles than they otherwise could. You've become an essential element in the ecology of publishing, Die, The readers, the booksellers, and the publishers love you, and this award, I'm happy to say, confirms that unqualified Congratulations, Di Morrissey. You must... Once lost in a blizzard together, <laughs> and we behave with utter I was pride. following you. <laughs> Good on you, oh, Di. Oh, thank you, mate. <laughs> oh my God, it's so heavy. Um, look, I'm I'm absolutely quite stunned. I never really expected um, to be given any kind of accolade, particularly one for something that you do that you that you love and to. Um, Make, make your living uh, doing what you love is really, really special. So I am so uh, grateful to um, the Arbia and, of course, Lloyd O'Neill, who over his lifetime did champion popular mass market fiction, which, after all, really is the lifeblood of publishers. And, Tom, I'm very uh, specially touched to receive this award from him because... Uh, Tom and Judy have been very wonderful friends through very good and very sad times. As Tom said, I have trudged beside Tom through sand and snow and also through the streets of 1970s London when Tom talked to me of the great and wonderful curse of wanting to write. And Tom, my next door neighbour at the time, was the first person I told when I received my publishing contract for my debut novel, Heart of the Dreaming. And Tom took me and shook me by the shoulders 
it's very scary when Tom gets serious. <laughs> and he said, you don't know what you have been given and what a journey it's going to be and how right he was. From age seven, I knew I wanted to tell stories and put them in a book one day. And from the day I held my first published book in my hands, and still 25 books later, the awe and staggering amazement that it has come to pass that I am a published writer never, ever leaves me. A writer writes no matter what. But without the support of an extraordinary publishing industry, our industrious scribblings would never see the light of day. They are edited, designed, printed, promoted, publicised by teams of outstanding professionals. And they're pushed by wonderful booksellers and libraries. So there are many people to thank. Everyone at Pan Macmillan, of course, um, we have been married for 26 years now. Um, and like all marriages, we have had our interesting moments. Uh, but here we are today, and there are some at the table who were there on day one. I'm very sorry Ross Gibb, our chairman, can't be here, but um, he's, uh, he's spoken and has been really wonderful. James Fraser, my publisher from book one until the day he retired a few years ago, is in Kenya. Thank you, James. Um, in the culture of a rather boys' club era, uh, Jimbo was my champion, and I love him dearly for that. Um, thank you to Liz Adams, who's an editor, friend, and sparring partner of many years. And thank you, too, I don't think she's here, but to a then bookseller called Selwa Anthony, who in 1986 read 30 pages I'd written and she held on to them until one day she became a bookseller, uh, I mean a literary agent, and she took them to James Fraser. In 1988, James recognised that it was time we not only published, but we promoted and talked up Australian stories and authors. I had been living a long time overseas as a diplomat's wife and I had returned to discover and fall in love with my own country for the first time. And it was serendipitous because readers were ready for our stories too. I also want to acknowledge um, my late uncle Jim Revitt who was an inspiring foreign correspondent for the ABC who was a huge mentor to me as he was to Stan Grant. Um, and many others. Thank you, David Gonski, for your time, your advice, and for introducing me to Ian Robertson. Robbo, thank you for taking the time and taking me to the next level, as you promised. Thanks more recently to Gary Evans from Harbour Publishing for taking on my children's books. And thank you, Jay Novak, for your friendship and being the best ever book tour travelling companion. And I just hope to hell you never write a book, um, but now you're too busy being a super agent. But most of all, I want to thank those who really are the reason we're all here, the readers. They write email and tell me how... Um, my books have taken them away from pain and loss, inspired them, and given them courage to step outside their comfort zone, men as many as women. I think we have all found wisdom, comfort, and escape in the pages of a book. And books will always be with us, I have no doubt of that. I have found with age, one becomes brave, or perhaps reckless, especially with the case of um, deciding to publish a monthly newspaper two years ago, which is, happy to say, still stirring hornet's nests. But as an author, the insecurity never leaves you. We continue to open our hearts and our veins upon the page. And when published, part of that deal is to step up onto the stage, and many of us would prefer to scribble away in obscurity. But the exposure to the sunlight of scrutiny by those who judge, the giving of yourself as a writer, makes you vulnerable, fragile 
and questioning. But quite recently, it was Tom, our Tom, who reminded me there is only one recourse to avenge the writer's curse, and that is to keep writing, to keep going forward, even when sometimes it seems to be a glacial place, pace. But then there are times on the mountain when the sun shines and the wind stops, and you feel that moment of elation that those words on the page have worked. I've always clung to the notion, I will get there. So this wonderful recognition has made that hard climb up the mountain wonderfully, vastly worthwhile. So to the members of ABIA, uh, my colleagues, my friends, and my biggest fans, my darling Boris, and wonderful, extraordinary children, Gabrielle and, and Nick, and especially to everyone in this room, thank you. <laughs>